Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast, bringing you smiles across the miles into whatever country you're currently in. Those of us who are quite sensitive, we know that a discouraging look from a colleague or a friend, or sometimes a negative word from a family member, can really stop us from learning. We can also pick up hidden ideas. For example, if someone is laughing at us and thinking, oh, oh, they'll never succeed in learning English. We can be very discouraged and we can often just put the book away and not return to it because something's changed. We feel that the, the energy has changed and this happens a lot. I remember once I had a friend who was learning to play the piano. He was doing really well and he was well on his way to having a career playing the piano. But one day his coach or his piano teacher, I'm not sure quite what to call them these days, while she was listening to him playing, she started uh, receiving text messages which bleeped. And then she started responding to those text messages. And my friend, realizing what was happening, stopped, closed the piano lid, and has never looked at the piano since that day. The coach said to him, Oh, you've stopped without permission. And he responded to her, Yes, and so did you. You stopped listening. It was a very tense moment, of course, but this makes my point very well. And that is, if there is a negative way which can discourage you, then there has to be a positive way which pushes back and lifts your energy and wants you to begin. Now, from past experience, I personally know that sometimes there are atmospheres and there are places where it's just not possible to learn. And there's no getting away from that. It could be if you are, for example, in some kind of unhappy situation, maybe with where you're living or with your marriage or partnership, or whatever. But sometimes it seems that there's just a, a very kind of cold influence, which means that we don't have the mentality for learning. And, and that can be very disturbing for some people. It creates an anger. It creates a distrust. It means that we end up hiding our books or putting them away often for months or years and we don't begin again. One nice way to put you in the mood for language learning is by using affirmations. If a negative word or thought can stop you learning, then a positive word or thought can help you learn. You may have heard about the power of positive affirmations in improving personal effectiveness, but what are affirmations? Affirmations, or positive affirmations as they're sometimes called, are often short sentences that you can make to yourself to reinforce your belief in your ability to achieve something, in this case, language learning. You can repeat them every morning or every evening or write them down and come back to them on a regular basis. Uh, I think in the old days, our ancestors used to do this with um, religious verses. So rather than say, for example, I can uh, learn English and I will learn English, they might write down all oh, things are possible uh, through deity or through God or whatever, which would have been a Bible verse. So this is not new. This isn't something that I've just invented. It's something that's always been there. All of us know those moments when we feel like we're kind of stuck somehow, that something isn't right and we can't seem to get back to where we were. 
You can repeat these affirmations every morning or every evening or write them down and come back to them on a regular basis. When learning a language, for example, a good affirmation a good affirmation might be, I'm confident about introducing myself in my target language and holding a five-minute fluent conversation about what I do. It could be something like, my pronunciation of infinitives in my target language is already very good, and I feel confident about my ability to learn how to pronounce other verb forms as well. Actually, I like that one. I like that affirmation, but it's a bit long, isn't it? It takes <laughs> too long to read, I think, on the train on the way to work. Um, positive affirmations essentially program your brain to focus on the positive. That's what they tell us. I mean, I personally don't believe that. I think positive affirmations send messages to the universe. What they do is they simply open up your mind for an answer to come in. So I don't think there's anything magical about this, and I don't think it's mechanical involving your brain. I think all they, all they do is make you open enough to see that you can do something that you want to do. So without any affirmations, it's much harder. Buying a grammar book, for example, <clears throat> it's not the actual book that helps you. It's just when you buy it, your mind is opened to receiving. And that's the purpose of anything that we do in learning English. It's not because of the thing in front of us. It's because it makes us open to doing it. It changes our mood. So this is the idea behind affirmations. Affirmations should be believable for the subconscious mind. Uh, there's no point doing your affirmations if you don't believe in them. <clears throat> well, that's true. I have a slightly different idea about that, as I've mentioned a moment ago. But um, <clears throat> uh, whatever idea that you're using to open up your mind, you have to make sure that it's believable. For example, I'm confident in my ability to speak English fluently by Friday <laughs> is not the best affirmation to use. You have to be realistic. I'm already good at talking and I could be better and I will be better. I'm already really good at talking in English. I'm confident in my ability to introduce myself when I meet the next English person dear. Right. So that's, uh, that's maybe a better example. Your affirmations should be in the present tense. So it's not like uh, I will do. It would be better to say I am doing or I am seeing. I am seeing my English getting better. Uh, and <clears throat> every day in every way that continues. So you formulate your affirmations in the present tense. Uh, again, these are designed to open your mind, okay? So it's not like you sit down in some hypnotic way and magically your mind changes. It's just uh, when you do something towards learning, whether it's buying a book, talking to someone, um, even just talking about learning, it's opening you up to taking the next step to what you should do. Your affirmations will be more effective if you put feeling into them. Okay, so if you can define how you feel, at least in the way that your affirmation is believable, it'll help you a lot. Another thing is if you can actually visualize uh, your your affirmation you know imagine that thing happening to you imagine you talking to that english person that you meet on the street that's a bit creepy that isn't it <laughs> the next native english person i meet i will speak fluently you go up to a complete stranger oi you <laughs> i'm going to talk to you in english it's a little bit strange <laughs> anyway um so using visualization imagining in your mind you speaking very well would be very good. Writing them down is very, very important as well. 
But please don't mistake these for something hypnotic or something magical. Uh, they're there to slowly open you up to ideas. They're not there as some kind of good luck charm. Um, make your affirmations into a habit to spot negative, negative patterns. You know, I was talking to someone yesterday on a, on a lesson in Italki, and I said, can you, can you say, I can learn English? So she said it, I can learn English. And I said to her, you don't sound very sure about that. And she said, yeah, I'm more comfortable saying I cannot learn English because that's how I feel. And I wanted to tell her, you know, that belief, uh, I cannot learn English, is really holding you back. Anything's possible. Everything is possible. But you have to believe it first. Otherwise, there's no point. Um, write your affirmations in English. There's no point writing them down in Latvian. <laughs> or or um, uh, Dutch or Norwegian or any other language for that matter. They, they really should be in English, okay? And uh, it's a good practice to begin. You can read these anytime that works for you, uh, in the morning when you wake up, the evening before you go to sleep. And these affirmations are not only for language learning. If you're having difficulties in finding happiness, and many people are in these dark winter days and uh, many of us have issues in our lives you know that we don't or we can't talk about with family or anything like that so yeah remember uh just before you go to bed at night just take five minutes and tell yourself i'm a good person and tomorrow uh, i'm a better person yeah so in the present tense probably not the best example that <laughs> bearing in mind what we've just read, it should be in the present tense, I am a good person, I am always a good person, probably better than, than talking about tomorrow, but yeah, maybe with gratitude would be a good way of doing it, so before you go to bed, I'm a good person, and today has been a good day, even if it's been rubbish. Anyway, um, these affirmations can be very good for getting you started, especially these days. I mean, I woke up this morning to hear about wars and bombs and everything else, and I'm thinking, really? <laughs> Do they have to give us that first thing in the morning? Can't they just give us some light classical music, you know? Um, <clears throat> rather than hearing about wars and bombs, I would prefer to hear something like, and that was Schubert's symphony lasting three and a half hours, and now some news headlines. A cat in Japan has been found safe and well after living in a tree for three months. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, um, these affirmations uh, are very important, so I recommend that you, you write some down and get started with them in the present tense. Uh, and in the morning and the evening, they're just like little prayers, you know, but written by you and for you, rather than anyone trying to send you into hell. <laughs> so enjoy them. See you soon. Bye.